album versus album. I think we on volume 25, if I'm not mistaken. This is LL Cool J walking with a panther versus Big Daddy Kane. It's a Big Daddy thing. <laughs> now, who don't remember these albums? Probably the majority of you. But these records, and people are probably like, why you compare these two? Like, what made you pick these two out of all of them to compare? Well, let's go back. And when I mean go back, let's go back and look at when things were the way they were. When LL Cool J came out, he was the biggest thing moving. He had so much energy, so much momentum, so much confidence in, on stage, and basically had the most successful rap love melody of all time with I Need Love, which opened up to rappers, man, we could be, we could be uh, vulnerable. You know, that was, that was not a rapper's creed, you know, to be vulnerable. And ever since then, you know, you start hearing, yo, baby, I need you. You my girl. <laughs> you know, everybody started trying to be vulnerable on the microphone. So with Bad doing it, all the success that it did, it opened up the lane. The anticipation for the next LL Cool J album was through the roof. But the comparisons between It's a Big Daddy thing and this album was they were similar. From album cover to to the um to the actual material. That's what people don't think, but LL got crucified for his album be cover because of the simple fact is when he put out his album cover, they was like, Well, we expect that for Big Daddy K. But LL Cool J, we want you to rock the mic like, you know, you a B-boy. You know, you ain't no playboy like Big Daddy Kane. And this led to a whole misunderstanding as, as uh, LL was trying to, because everything was going towards this. People wasn't ready for LL to go to that level. You know, now the player thing was all right, but when LL was doing it, it was a problem with the champagne, the girls. They didn't want to see that with LL, but Kane, they allowed it. <laughs> so it became a microcosm of two of the same projects. But needless to say, let's get to the work. Now, let's start off with Walking with a Panther. Because Walking with a Panther to me is very underrated. A lot of MCs love the album because LL, even though he had that success, he took a break. And when he took a break, Kumo D came out and dropped a diss song on him. And then it was like you didn't hear anything from LL. LL was still touring off the album, making money. And, you know, and he working on his album. They got a release date. People were waiting on LL Cool J to come back. You know, like they need a new joint. Jack the Ripper came out and burned. And then when that burned, here come Mo D and Mo D back on top. So everybody's waiting for LL to come back and strike. There was supposed to be a battle between those two. And Big Daddy Kane was supposed to go up against Rakim. It was a couple other battles set up. The promoter set it up, had the money ready. LL signed on the fight to battle Kumo cool D. So a lot of the rhymes you hear on Walking with a Panther, especially It Gets No Rougher, the diss song, was lined up to be the battle rap against Kumo D. So the lyrical assaults that you hear on the album come from an angry LL Cool J who people had written him off and and told him he was done, you know, Mo D buried him and all that stuff, and LL's through. Oh, man, he he came back and laced him from dropping him, the lyrical assaults on dropping him. Now, the beat selections on a lot of these songs, I probably wouldn't have used. A lot of people probably wouldn't use, but lyrically, he was, he was sharp. He was sharp as a pin. 
you know, Jiggling Baby. I love the original Jiggling Baby, but it wasn't party, you know, and right then it had to be a party type song. Back then, this was like the kid and play era start coming in. Everybody was dancing. Everybody was moving. So they had to do a remix to Jiggling Baby. But oh my goodness. I mean, Fast Pig, just a quick freestyle. Let me tell you about a girl named Peg with DC haircut and stew with his legs. Dressed to kill. Her physique is ill. Her face belongs on the dollar bill. Her boyfriend's down with the MOB. Driving around in a 300E. Drug jewelry and all that. Talking about my man K4 Black. Sipping on sham. Diamonds on the hand. Cold cash making, what she said, making cold cash carrying drugs for a man. Driving around in a kitted up Jetta. Under the seat, the automatic Beretta. You know, the whole blah blah rap. Telling fellas they need to stay off the bra strap. That's the kind of girl she is. <laughs> I mean, he was coming with me. I'm telling you, it's forget about it. <laughs> That album from Nitro, every song on that, why do you think it call it dope? So many joints on there, Def Jam in the Motherland. And then, uh, Big Old Butt. Tina got a big old butt. I know I told you I be true, but Tina got a big old butt. So I'm leaving you. <laughs> See ya. And then, um, you know, we can go to It's a Big Daddy thing. If this album, that's why I said they were so many songs that was a microcosm of each other. Where Walking with a Panther went wrong is the fact that the love songs became so successful. They wanted a love song. To be the joint. I'm that type of guy. Was the wrong lead single for that album. But they wanted to go into the Playboy thing. And then the, the love songs that they had on there. Were the wrong selections. They were mostly R&B-ish type. Slow dragging song. One shot at love. And oh my gosh. It was just too many love songs. That just did not work for that album. Two different worlds. That song needed to be destroyed. Should have never made the album. One Shot at Love shouldn't have made the album. I'm telling you, those two love songs right there was what was probably holding back the album. There was actually a video for One Shot at Love. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but it's a big daddy thing. You know, this is the dance party with everybody's up tempo smooth operator cause I'm so smooth when pretty much Prince Paul, Easy Mo B, Marley Marley did a couple of joints but mostly Big Daddy Kane produced his own records so you know to be your man this the house that C built Warm it up, Kane. You know, all the joints on here. Plus, Kane was lacing it. Mortal Kombat. Come on, man. <laughs> Mortal Kombat rhyme. Which everybody was like, oh, okay. He coming with it. Like, that's what he was finna do with, you know, Rock Him. So, when he did the rap for Kane, they did that live and put it on here. A lot of the songs that he did live on stage, they went back and redid it. And start doing the pimp stuff. I get the job done. That's Teddy Riley. I work, baby. I get the job done. I work, baby. You know, all of these songs all dance oriented. But he also had lyrical content like Children Out of Future, Young, Gifted, and Black. And overall... Oh man, the variety of this album to me makes it more complete. I think it's more of a complete album where 
Walking with a Panther was basically one dimensional, a lot of aggression coming and a lot of great lyrical content. But it was more of a B-boy scratching type album with two ridiculous love songs mixed in. Where Kane is a variation of pimping ain't easy and the be your man and using old samples and loops to make it work. And Panther just had way too many songs. I mean, it just, it lagged on and, and shouldn't have lagged on because they put all these extra songs on there like going back to Cali. You even got Jack the Ripper thrown on there. And I'm like, we didn't need that many songs. Then if you bought the album, which I did, you basically got screwed because the tape had more out. I mean, it had more songs because they had more space. So whenever you don't got enough songs for the album, for the record, because it's too big, they normally got to give you two records or something, man. It's not even worth it. But overall, if I got to pick a winner, I'm going to say it's a Big Daddy thing. I say that was the better record. It's the better album. All together. Believe me, and that's hard to do because I like Walking with a Panther. And I probably listen to Walking with a Panther more than I did It's a Big Daddy thing. But... You know, it's just how it is. They both microcosms of each other. It's your boy Carcino. I'm out.